Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we probably won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. YouTube, you see it. This is my warning screen. I'm just chilling. I'm really just relaxing. This I I don't curse in any of my videos. And if there's any paraphernalia, I will blur it out, YouTube, every time. 100%. So, you know, don't yell at Mark me. Um... <laughs> Don't forget, we do got Patreon and we got merch. I can connect my merch now to... I just never do it. I be forgetting. Twitch.com, username at the bottom if you want to catch it. Alright, let's get into it. Hold on now. This is Essex Homeowners vs. Travelers. <laughs> I'll be looking at these titles and I'm like, okay, that looked like it could be negative. You feel me? And... I, that looked like it could be negative. This is from North One's channel. Salute. You get me. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True, true, true. This countryside is Britain's big... In the, in the heart of the Essex countryside is Britain's biggest traveller site. Over half of them live there illegally, and the local residents have had enough. Wait, uh, illegally? Okay, I never really know how these caravan campsite situations be working. So, obviously, you can buy a plot or rent a plot legally... And they give it to you, but how you be, how why well, I put a boot on they? <laughs> They've had three burglaries since the travellers have been. What, you, how you're can you me, sit there and I, say something? No, oh, so they meet face to face. The local community is at breaking point. Can a former UN negotiator, Colonel Bob Stewart, use his military experience and broker a peace settlement in this troubled area? Right now, it's a standoff between homeowners and the travellers. I gotta be clear on who's who because I'm I'm confused. I didn't when they showed each person, I didn't know who was traveler, who was homeowner. Did they either have the right idea or not? Some days you say yes. Now that you're actually in a gypsy's place, do you still think that we're filth and scum? Got license for shotguns and everything else, and I've, and I've told the police that if they come in after me, my bandit, I'd use them. You're dead now, Mr. Grigley. Despite court orders establishing the majority of the travellers are there illegally, they still remain. Accusations of intimidation, antisocial behaviour and prejudice are rife on both sides. Leading the fight for the travellers is Kathleen McCarthy. I don't know if anybody else caught what they just did. Leaving the fight, leading the fight for the traveller is whatever her name, and look how the camera panned. Look where they panned over. Sides. Leading the fight for the... So you mean to tell me that they're not throwing this trash over here? Or y'all not insinuating that that's what's happening by doing it like that? The Travelers is Kathleen McCarthy. I have running water, I have a flushing toilet, and I have electric, can turn on my telly or my electric kettle whenever I want. That is luxury to us people. Everybody's terrified to go back on that road. Why can't we just be settled and have a bit of comfort in life and get our children educated the same as anybody else? We're in a crib. No, I'm just playing. Okay. The man who's taken it upon himself to lead the fight against the travellers is Len Gridley, a self-employed builder who's waging a very public war against the encampment, which now has expanded so far it backs on to his property. He Dang. is a very spiteful man and a very bitter old man. One day he decided to look out the back gate and say, I have nobody to love me and care for me, so I'll just pick on these gypsies out the back. There's 
there's only one other person that I have ever known treated people like him, and that was Hitler. Dang, is he that bad? Go on, why you got? Go on. 46-year-old Len has lived at Windy Ridge, a four-bedroom detached house, for over 15 years. Len claims that he's been forced to turn his home into a fortress and that its value has plummeted. It's an insult to call them gypsies and it's an insult to call them travellers. I'd call them uh, immigrants uh, breaking our laws um, and they shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. I don't want to be build my place like a prison camp. I'm in the Green Belt. But I've got to because of them to keep them out. No lie, they both both representatives look like. Uh, hey, can I speak to your manager? Just get a manager. <laughs> they both giving that. That's Len's insane. main issue with the travellers are noise pollution and fly tipping. But recently, he's received several death threats. I've got license for shotguns and everything else, and I've, and I've told the police that if they come in after me, my band, you'd I'd use them. For the Colonel, it's a classic conflict. Two entrenched sides unable to see any possibility of a compromise. I don't trust them. I don't trust what they say. The only way I can find the real situation is to get on the ground, meet people, actually get their view of what's happening. I'm going to do my very best. These people don't realize that I'm not just a pretty face. Sensational cap. I gotta stop pausing. No more pausing. Colonel Bob Stewart was a former UN commander in Bosnia and a specialist in hostage negotiation. He has over 25 years of military experience. Whilst in Bosnia, Colonel Bob won the military's second highest honor, the DSO, for helping lay the foundations of a peace that still exists there today. This is a man who knows about conflict and how to solve it. Negotiation is something you learn from life. Everyone negotiates. It's part of daily life. Whoever came up with this idea for a show is... Particularly when I was in Bosnia, when I was right in the middle of a battlefield, and it was crucial that I got the negotiation right because people were dying. Listen, I married your French woman. Negotiation every day. <laughs> I want a challenge where it's a real problem. I want to make a difference. If I do that, if I really do that, I will be highly satisfied. I don't see it. I just don't see him getting the job done. But you know, he got awards and things of that nature. <laughs> Colonel Bob sets off. Just like when he was in the field, he calls upon his right-hand man, Captain Martin McGowan Scanlon. Martin and I served in the army together, and I need Martin to give me a hand here. Because Sprite. what I want to do is to go on the ground, meet the protagonists, and when I'm doing that, I want him to get good intelligence on what is actually happening on the ground, because I'm going to be fed a lot of public relations bullshit. Yes, you are. Uh, from both sides. Yep. And I actually need to have someone who I trust absolutely. To sift through the BS and really judge characters. To tell me what he considers to be the objective truth. God, he looks suitably... Um, I've absolutely never seen this. Scruffy, perfect. Not even close. Martin. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Get in, get in. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You look as ugly as usual. <laughs> on their way to Essex, Bob brings Martin up to speed on the history surrounding. Not gonna lie, this guy, he looks like the dude from Benidorm. The, with the swinger couple, the, he looks like the guy. In the traveler's sight. He then outlines Martin's task for the conflict, primarily information gathering. <laughs> First, I want you to have a quick scout of the G2 
gypsy camp, get a feel for it. I want you to look at the roads, see whether they're making a lot of noise, see whether they're making a lot of rubbish. Keep outside the camp, but look, look at it and actually get the feel. And then I want you to go and see the, the council. Go and yes. see what they think should be there. Have a word with the press, OK? What I want from you is intelligence on actually the attitudes of people to the gypsy camp. OK, no problem. All right? Absolutely, no problems. See you. This is pretty. Um, if gypsies are here illegally, you can understand the local people that have paid a lot of money for their houses um, objecting I'm, to... Listen, shout out to all my gypsy homies and things of that nature. I, I, I ain't even gonna lie to you, I'd be upset. If I was a homeowner, like put it like if I owned an entire home, and a lot of it would be me just hating on you. That you just getting around the government like this and I didn't bought a home. I could have RV'd it illegally too. Rubbish and objecting to noise and perhaps a lot of vehicle movement. Before any successful negotiation, the Colonel will need the support and trust of both sides. He starts by meeting local homeowner Len Gridley. Wow. Morning. Morning. My name's yeah. Colonel Bob Stewart. I'm the negotiator. negotiator. <laughs> I'm here because there's some chance that we can actually sort out a problem. And I've been asked to come here and... and... The decor of this house is... Actually, today I just want to get the feel of it. Yep. First up, Bob asked to see the border between Lens property and the traveller's site. So, here's a few questions for you. I leave the door open, have a walk down the gardens, yeah. show you how close they do live. But so you say about a thousand people live here? In this... Well, as you, as you say, you've got them from the left here, right yeah. down onto the right hand side, uh, which yeah. is all the illegal site. So this is the front line, is it? This is what? actually what we're talking about. Well, that's what I call the front line. It's a like... pretty big obstacle, actually. Yeah, well... Dude's backyard is huge. This all his backyard? Well, they can say... throw things over it. They say throw things over, they dump things over it. Yeah. And all of that. So, um... Yeah, look, beer yeah. bottles, mm. glasses. Yeah. Be honest with see. you. Yeah. Where the hell's that come from? What's that? That's, been, just... dumped, that's been dumped over the fence. What is it? That's not mine. A, r a rock? Whilst the Colonel gets to grips with what does and what doesn't. What is that, an anchor? Doesn't belong in Lens Garden. Martin sets off on his brief to find out what the local people make of it all. The problem, I think the problem is he might just be show them what they want him to see, you know? That's the danger. So hopefully we can find out a little bit of stuff for him that will give him a bit of the edge when he comes to the negotiation side. Martin's first visit is to local councillor Malcolm Hope. He explains that whilst given 30 legal plots, the site has now been illegally extended to twice its original size. He 30 legal turned into 60. He also outlines Plus. that despite an evicting court order and an objection from the Deputy Prime Minister, legally the travellers can't be removed. Wait, what? What do you mean? So we got a situation, despite what the council want to do, despite what the Deputy Prime Minister said, you've got to sit on your hands and do nothing because they've found some way around the law so they can stay there. Absolutely. There's nothing you can do about it, is what you're saying. We, we cannot do anything until judicial review hearing has been uh, addressed. That's crazy. They found the loophole to finesse. Do you, feel, do you feel sorry for the guy with what he's got to put up with? Um, yes, I think you, you, you have to, because, you know, somebody that <clears throat> buys a property and lives in the rural area doesn't suddenly expect to have a thousand people living at the back of their car. See what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I would have been mad too. As a homeowner, the full legal process to remove the travellers could take several years. However, the local residents need a solution now. The sewerage in the corner there is the overflow from their sewerage in there, the gypsies. It's an overflow. It's an overflow of their pipe flowing into my ditches. You can smell it yourself. What's that? What's that? That's the sewerage from there? Yep. How I've come it comes through here? comes across there into these ditches. Yeah. I've piped all the way along there. I've got photographs of it, me piping it and all that. Yeah. But that's what we have to, uh, that's what we have to put up with. But, oh, um, yeah. Nah, bro. I, 
I'm trying to maybe because we're only hearing his side right now. But I'm like it ain't really nothing that can be said to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm having to do all this extra stuff. You know, I just came here, paid my little mortgage, and I'm supposed to be living carefree. Disgusting. I mean, you've got what you've got. This is the forward edge of the battle area. Yeah. And you've got a sewage system overflow coming down the bottom of your garden. Horrendous. Friendly Mr. Sheridan, another one that gives a regular abuse in the lane and all of that. He looked like he'd be cussing dude out. And how would you defend yourself? I defend myself to my best abilities. If it means yeah. uh, nine, nine, firearms, nine. firearms it will be. Okay. Russell, Things are looking ugly. He want all the smoke. Meanwhile, Martin McGowan Scanlon has been doing some digging. He's managed to arrange a meeting with one of the male members of the encampment. Hey, John. I'm Martin. Pleased to meet you. How are you doing? Oh, this is the same red truck, very dude. Tense, and they're reluctant to appear on camera. OK, yeah, so you just give us a shout and tell us when you're, when you're ready, and then I'll, I'll, I'll start off. Yeah, that's the same dude. That's the... Unbeknownst to Martin, it's the very same man who was recently staring out the colonel. I don't want to get us evicted from our homes, and we've nowhere to go. And the one that's in the bailiff's office, we've nowhere to go. OK, but, I mean, that, that's, that's one part of it, isn't it? I mean, it's been also this problem with Len, isn't it? Well, every, he's got a figure of speech. Everyone's, you know what I mean? Well, if they've got something to say, let them say it. But I... so he's got a figure of speech, what? i got no problems with Len. Whatever their public position, there is no question that Len has been seriously affected by the constant run-ins with the neighbours. Have you ever tried to do yourself in? Uh, it's got very close to it. If anything happened to me, the gypsies would never be there tomorrow. Yeah. I've made... It's that deep? Insurance policies against that. In what way? Uh, terrorists coming in and just blowing the sights to the kingdom terrorists. come. Terrorists? So you know terrorists? Oh, yes. You're, you're not pulling... No, 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 that's an actual truth. Threats don't, don't bother me, you know. Uh... Well, they do, actually. But if threats didn't bother you, you wouldn't have a friend say you would... That's a, now, see, I do not condone that type of behaviour, but that, that, the level of negativity, bro, is on. It's crazy. You wouldn't have a, a dog that would attack them, and you wouldn't be talking about suicide bombers coming in from presumably Lebanon, I've, I've... which is rubbish. Uh, no, you know, it it's rubbish, Len. Come on. No, it isn't. The suicide was sitting in Tenerife. <laughs> That's what, what are they doing? On holiday? Yeah, they're on holiday there. <laughs> are they on a deck chair, do you think, these guys? They're just sitting there waiting uh, for the no, call. No, they're working out there at the moment. Ah, oh, uh, fine. The situation is escalating, and things haven't been made any easier by a recent tragedy, when two travellers died in a house fire, just after Len had agreed to have his picture taken with them for the local newspaper. Ah. Uh. Martin meets a local journalist and discovers that a major part of this war has been waged in the media. Not just the local paper headlines, but also in TV reports. Many residents are too... Just the local paper headlines, but also in TV reports. I'm not gonna lie, bro's sweater game is bar none. This is the second sweater he had. Many residents are too frightened to speak out for fear of reprisals. Well, I don't mess with you, Mr. Middling. Once I go... You go. And that's, and that's for a fact. Yeah. And Mr. Gridley doesn't exactly get on with his neighbours. If I saw a gypsy caravan on, with kids in it, I'd let it burn. Now, I couldn't care. Dang. I'm no more. Whilst Martin continues his research, the Colonel makes sure Lennox. Oh, really? Can't stand leads to a day of head to head negotiations. Hold on. Within the next 24 hours, okay. I'd like to get you together with the opposition and then actually start uh, this talking. This is going to be fierce. <laughs> is that acceptable to you? Oh, it's acceptable. We've got, as you say, unless we talk to them and tell them our point of view, nothing can be done. He's seen what I have to put up from the, with the gypsies. Now he can go and speak to the gypsies and see what they say about me and what they have to put up with from me and the rest of the residents. 
I think it needs to be an ex-soldier man to go down on that site. Uh, I call it Mini Beirut down there. I think if they were just average citizens sitting there and not doing anything, they would have nothing to say about them. But this guy hates, like, he literally does not like the sight of the, you know what I'm saying, the travelers. So I'm pretty sure he's just being petty at all costs. Every scenario, so um, they might have something to say, but I, I don't know, we'll see. Well, that's Len. Um, what's clear is that this man may well be prepared to compromise, and that's good, because if he's prepared to compromise, I can probably get a deal from him at least, and that's the way forward. I didn't get that feeling from Lynn at, uh, from dude at all. <laughs> I ain't hear no type of compro compros what is it compromise in his voice. <laughs> uh, I've never been to a gypsy camp before, so uh, it'll be my first. I want to go to one. Um, we're going to see Kathleen, who apparently is the leader of the gypsies, and I on the map. This is the way. Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen. Colonel Bob Stewart. I'm nice the negotiator. Very nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Kathleen Thanks. got that nice on. We have a negotiator. We might solve something. <laughs> a negotiator. Take That's a seat what I down do. There. Uh, let me just. Say, I don't want, I'm After exchanging to... pleasantries, the Colonel gets Kathleen's views on Len Gridley. Len fights with us through publicity, uh, the media, uh, newspapers. But the more he decided to talk about us and bring hatred against us, the more it really did become that. He is spiteful, jealous, right. and bitter. All, Kathleen takes Bob on a brief it's tour. It's a fairly known tactic though, right? If you want to get like, if you want to get people on your side, go to the media, go to the media. Simple. The site, taking in some of the bigger houses. Is this one here. Oh, yeah. wow. Be very careful here. Now this yeah. is my mum's home, which is quite comfortable. And th these are these. This these is the grand girls. my mum's grandchildren. This is my. This got to be legal daughter. though. She fell and hurt her knee. I must say it's absolutely lovely. I've this never. This is now. Can I know. show you in here now? This is. I don't static. want to walk on the carpet. No, come on, fine. I, I have to say, I'm pretty gobsmacked, because this is beautiful. They make you want to look at your living situation and make sure you're good because that house was immaculate. I ain't even gonna lie. Whilst the Colonel's being wowed by the traveler's creature comforts, Martin has hit the town centre to canvas local opinion. The reality of the situation is that these people seem to be above the law. And uh, it's not just Crazy Hill, it's all over the country, isn't it? They seem to feel that they've got some sort of God given right to totally go against the general rules and order that society lives by. People have built buildings on there, on Greenbelt land, um, and they shouldn't have done. I think, quite honestly, they're taking liberties and they need kicking out. And if I'm being honest and people ain't said nothing wrong, because that is all factual, that <laughs> the council, whatever they just said, they can't do nothing. They're, they're above, they found loopholes that makes them above whatever we have going on right now. It's facts. Do you pay council tax? We do. You do? Yes, we have ah. all the proof for that. Yeah, so everyone pays council tax? Everybody pays council tax here. We pay road tax. Yeah. We pay insurance. Yeah. Like they say we yeah. don't. We pay... Well, I think the problem here like... is that they don't like gypsies. That, mm. That's the main problem. When somebody is saying things that don't happen, mm. that's... It, it causes the problems. This yeah. is the bathroom. It's not really what you call large, but to us, this is everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It has the sink, it has the toilet, the flushing toilet. Mm. It has everything, you know what I mean? So... Mm -hmm. Len claims it's the travellers flushing toilets that is causing the sewage problems. He's demanded the council get involved and work out who or what is causing the overflow to the system, but to no avail. 
What happens to the sewage from this place? Same thing that happens to Lens. Mm. Len is no different to us. We mm. only all have sump tanks. What happens when it overflows and where does it go? The overflow is all connected. I don't know where the overflow goes, sir, and I'm not going to tell mm. you a lie. Yeah. Meanwhile, Martin takes a trip. Key, she was about to cap. <laughs> she don't know. To an estate agent to see if Lens claims that his property is being massively Let's devalued go. are true. Let's just give, a, give me an example for it, sir. You know, for Crypto salute for the gift of sir. Four bedroom detached house. If you had to sell it now, it backed onto the encampment. What sort of price would you expect to get for it? Well, we, we've got one down there at the moment. It's up for just under 500,000 with land actually backs onto it. Right. right. But you, when you go there, you're already going to have in your mind a figure of less than you would perhaps value it for otherwise. Well, you? no, I think the figure will be okay. It's just not going to be as saleable. It's not going to, he's not going to have maybe 20 or 30 people looking at it straight away. You know, it's okay. going to probably suit the right sort of people. So you reckon the price is going to be right? The price will be the same, but, but it'll it just take longer as, to sell. Take a little bit longer to sell. Yeah. Martin is more cap. You know that price going down. Cut the lies. Why are we lying in, in the face of the media? Like, don't tell that lie. Completed the fact finding. And property value going down because of certain people living in the area is a fact. It is not even the people living there. It's what they do and then not taking care of the area. Well, if I walk up to a $500,000 house and I look around and send an inspector and they're like, yo, there's people that's living across in a lot. There's overflow landfill coming through the black. 500000 It's not 500000 then. I got to deal with that. That's instantly 375000 now. You hear me? Colonel Bob has persuaded Len and Kathleen to participate in a day of discussions. Very pleased to meet you. It was an honor for you to come. It was my pleasure. The negotiation is on. He didn't even talk to her that much. Seems to be a very decent man that won't take no side of the story, but he will judge us as he sees us. They think they're right. We think we're right. We haven't broken the law. It's them that have broken the law. There may be no compromise, you know? It may be just them and us. And that's what I, that's, maybe it's because I'm too basic, but that's what I see. It's the laws being broken on one side and it's not being broken on the other side. And the people who are not breaking the law are mad. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, you know, a natural response. Coach off. How's it going? Got your beer. Not bad time. Yeah. That evening, the colonel catches up with his former captain, and over a pint, they discuss the intelligence gathered over the previous 24 hours. OK, well, I found out a lot of things. I mean, I started off talking to the leader of the council, and... Um... Martin explains that some of the travellers on the site are there legally, but over half are not. He tells the colonel that the majority of local people are unhappy with the size of the encampment, but he also explains that the effect on house prices has been exaggerated, and the main problem lies with the people's perceptions of the traveller site. The fact is, there is a gypsy site there. It's always going to be there, forever and ever. The, the whole issue is not about, oh, we're going to get all these people moved on. There will still be 30 pitches left. They're going to be there. We've got a it's classic It's just the illegal ones that are causing here the problem. Totally different approach. That you got to sit, like, think about it, bro. If 30 pitches, if that a lot, if that lot is made for 30, 30, and there's 60, there has to be overflow. It was only built for 30. There gotta be doo doo running everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Which is two communities. Both are fearing for their homes. You and I both know why people fight in the end. It's to defend their homes, their families. On the one hand, you get local residents who watch the quality of their life go down markedly because they're frightened. On the other hand, you have the gypsies, who most of them seem quite decent. And without realizing it often, they're actually coercing the local people. And okay. some of the things they're doing are pretty antisocial. Overall, is the misunderstanding on both sides? The answer is big yes. And perhaps that's where we can start the moment. Another gifted sub from crypto. You always going crazy, ma'am. I salute it. 
I've energy. designed the setup for this negotiation with each side sitting on stools and me standing because I want to be mobile and I want them to face one another. I want to try and get this out in front of the other side because only if they do that can we then start to find a resolution. A bit nervous now, yeah. To tell you the truth, I'd be a liar if I said anything else standing outside the church. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but I think it'll be all right. I've spoken and phoned to about half a dozen residents in the road and in the village different questions they want aren't me to ask this woman today and uh, see what her replies are. The history of this conflict has been primarily played out in the local media. Numerous accusations, claims and counterclaims. But now the two protagonists will finally meet face to face. Hi Kathleen. Hi Bob. Bob, Hi. morning. Len. Morning Kath. So you don't Len... mind shaking hands with No, no, oh, no, as long as you don't think I've got the gypsy curse because unfortunately someone had their arm around me last time and unfortunately they died. Not my fault, I hope. So you yes. haven't got a curse, curse no. you, I feel safe. OK, then. let's go in. That's a great opening line. Terrible opening line. Why would he... Why would he what I want... lead with that? It's just automatic animosity. Oh, you think that's funny? You brought that up in a joking manner. You see what I'm saying? What I want to do now is to actually do the negotiation. And this is where it becomes much more serious from my point of view. So far, I've just been... Unbeknownst to Kathleen and Len, the Colonel has brought Martin along. Between them, they've concocted a plan to put both parties under pressure from the start. The Colonel has placed a double-page advert in the local paper, declaring that should this negotiation fail, it will be down to them. He believes they both use the media to their own advantage. So he's turning it against them by you. 100%. Using the media himself, hoping that they'll disarm them right from the start. What we intend to do is to take out a full page, double page feature in the Gazette. But we're actually naming you. You see here, Len, your name and Kathleen as representatives of both Len, your name, and Kathleen as representatives. It's not even a real... <laughs> See here, Len, your name, and Kathleen. Never seen such a terrible fake. Like, this is not real. Like, I, okay. He said he's going to, so he wants to, like, shock value, right? Let me show you a paper with it in there, but this is... As... Page not even the same length. Look at this. <laughs> it's not even the same paper. Representatives of both sides of the argument. And we're going to put that into the newspaper this week. At a stroke, the Colonel has taken away the main way the two parties have previously waged their war. Playing chess, it's not chess. He hopes will focus their efforts towards reaching a resolution. <laughs> the next thing I want to do is I want to actually ask each of you to talk to the other and tell the other person, we'll start with you, Len, what really makes you mad, and I want you to say it straight now to Kathleen. Uh, I think the first thing that makes me mad and the village is the sewerage problem we've got in the, in the road. Where is all the sewerage cu coming from and where... Absolutely, and that is a respectable reason to be mad. Is it all going to? The constant tooting of voters down there, um, it's night and day, um, seven days a week. There's so many issues that uh, people have burnt the fly tipping in the road and the rubbish that's chucked out the windows. It's not come from the residents. The road used to be completely clear and the residents haven't changed. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Nope. No, they're all facts. All, all, all of those are legitimate concerns. OK, so that's it. Yep. Your statement is over. Yep. Good. Kathleen, your statement, please. Well, first of all, I'm going to say what I don't like about you, and then I'll go on from that. Here's the, here's the person. Let's get negative, Kathleen. Oh, attack now. What I don't like about you, you're a selfish man. You think of nobody but yourself, right? You're lonely, you're sad, and if you could get a life and a partner, you'd see how happy life could be. Now, the fly tipping. <laughs> Uh, you, why are you trying to bring that man's whole morale down? Let's be real, though. He's not selfish. He's on here. He's here on the behalf of the community. Your biggest, 
You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not really selfish. All right, fly tipping. Issue is the rubbish. Ye live on the road where the rubbish is, not us. Ye live on it. So as far as I'm concerned, if there's any rubbish, it belongs to ye. No. That's selfish. That is selfish. That is selfish. She know that's cap. That ain't, come on, man. Now, you're not trying to get to the bottom of this. With things on the boil, the colonel steps away from the protagonists as the more random and personal issues of the conflict bubble to the surface. You've got to get it out before you can move forward. That's why Bob hasn't interrupted. They step back out of it. That's the technique he's using at this point. Let him get on. <laughs> If you had an issue with that and you were going to make us look bad because of that, you should Let's go. Another one. Crypto, appreciate you. You're making the stream look lit. Stood up like a man. It is. Back to back, isn't it? Mm -mm. And be honest actually, with you, yeah. I don't feel safe. If you're living down in a caravan, when the English was down there, I could drive round to that site and knock yeah. on any one of them caravans. Look, I don't, don't expect talk to go and do it. about getting hurt down in our site till you come down and try it. You have not tried it. So you, How you're can telling you me sit there and I, say such no, a you're thing? No, you're telling me now, if I come down there at any time... At any time? So I'm welcome. You are more than welcome. But it doesn't take a television pro. I just believe in my whole heart of hearts that this lady is over right now. Graham to get you to come down. <laughs> Even he think. This is getting quite good now. They're both getting a bit heated about each other. Well, let's see what happens. They've had three burglaries since the travelers have been What there. you're trying to say is the travelers moved in, my house was burgled three times. Yeah. That's what you're saying, isn't yep. it? Yeah. Well, prove that the travelers done it. You videoed Christmas Day, the children and the young girls, you could tell exactly what them young girls had I've on the say. I've have you never, on, the front on a video of the camera, I have you videoing, videoing children. I have it. You no, said I'm... the young girls was dressed up as Merry Stop. Christmases. Stop. No, I Thank did you. not say Stop. that at all. Stop. Now we getting over negative. She just called bro a a file, a file of. You know what I'm saying? Pedoism. That's crazy. Enough. Borderline, that's okay. what she said. Yeah, it's going around in circles now, so Bob's just bringing it back to uh, bring it back to Earth. I'm really glad we've got stuff, everything out into the open. What I want to do now is to get you to look outside the box and then actually think where we go from there. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed? Good. That was clear. Clearly, not as fiery. That was clearly not as fiery as it might have been. I'm very pleased by that. Now, what I want to go on to. Did bro not hear what I just heard? The lady called him a predator of some sort. That is tough. <laughs> is to get each side to look at the other person's point of view, how they see the conflict, because that will help them when I come to actually push them together next time and try and get some kind of compromise. Phase two of the negotiation. For this stage, the Colonel is going to split the protagonist up, but to do that, he's forced to break Martin's cover and inform both parties about his covert role. Kathleen, you know I wanted to show you the gypsy site from a different perspective. Well, I meant that literally. To do that, I'm going to put you into a <laughs> helicopter to look. Don't worry. Right. Don't worry. It's great fun. Yeah. And I'll tell I'll, you. I'll, I'll send Martin along. That is crazy. Putting her on into a helicopter to see the damage. Okay. Along as well. Okay, I just All right. that. Okay. <laughs> Martin's not going to be too happy with that decision. He's not been up in a chopper for the best part of 10 years. The problem with Martin is that uh, I've flown with him to Kazakhstan. He hates flying. He's bloody petrified. Kathleen, look, there's nothing at all to worry about, OK? All you've got to do, if you're feeling a bit dodgy, look at the horizon. He's a really hard guy, but flying, flying gets him going. So I'm offering him a bit of a snifter. Um, 
Uh, he's um, rejected <laughs> it, so I'll have to drink it for him. Yeah, give him a wave. Whilst Kathleen takes an aerial view of the site, the Colonel has persuaded Len to actually enter the traveller encampment. Bob has guaranteed Len's safety and will be with him at all times. That's like me guaranteeing somebody's safety when they come to Chicago. Yeah, bro, you good. No, that's impossible. You can't guarantee nobody's safety when you're not, especially in Bob's case, you're not even from there, right? What are these things here for? They're red gas bottles. Why? You tell me. Yeah. The Colonel has arranged for Len to meet Kathleen's mother for a conciliatory cup of tea. Okay. Ah! Good old Sprite. Kathleen's mum? Yes. I'm yes. Colonel Bob. I'm the negotiator. <laughs> and I'm coming in if I, if I might. It's a nice house. It's lovely. I think you've got a beautiful house here. Very, very nice. Well, it's a, uh, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bro is in fear for his life. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time Len has ever yeah. entered a traveler's house. Well, oh, that big fella right there in there with you. The colonel eases Len into the situation, and understandably, the travelers are keen to hear what he has to say. Something's got to be done yeah. down the line. Um, yeah. Look how he's sitting. This how you know, bro, uncomfortable boy, and they're like a little turtle here in that one. Help me. What the answer is, I don't know. Mm. I don't think Kathleen knows the answer and everything. Well, and it's my job to suggest a few things. Whilst the Colonel eases the tension, Martin is getting a much rougher ride. What I want you to think about is, other people's perception. So put yourself in other people's shoes and yeah. look at it. But That's I'm not, not going to let other people think that no, we're doing something that we're not. No, I, I, I'm not. I never volunteered I, to I, do this I, program. I also, I also understand that, Kathleen. You know what I mean? Here, Martin's role. So is she's not even really willing to take accountability for. You know challenge what I'm Kathleen's position that the travellers are the victims in this conflict. You see the rubbish on the far side over there, over by the steel cans. Uh, you, mean, the, you mean those gas steel bottles? Fence. You're talking about the gas cylinders? Yeah. Yeah? Is that rubbish or is it gas cylinders? Well, it doesn't matter. They're one and the same. Or it shouldn't be left lying around there, should But it's it? there for a reason. Look at the rubbish down here on this side. Where? What's the reason? Try, try and Where? see Where's it from, the rubbish? Try and see it from yeah, other show people's perspective. Show me the rubbish first. Just down here by this building there. Where? Look at all the crap there on the side. Can you see it down what the crap? side? Look, coming out the back of the house. That's people around being that. too lazy. They've just thrown it out the back there. No, that's not being lazy. Look at the perception. But she's not even trying to hear it. You take yourself away from being a gypsy for a moment. You fly over that, what do you, you think? You bring me to it's the council filthy, estate disgusting. and I'll show you dirt and filthy. She's talking about a council estate. But it's not a council... All right. What I'm trying to explain to you then is that whatever you tell me, whatever you show me, the perception is going to be a certain thing. And that's what we're trying to and stop. And exactly. That's, why that's what I I'm trying to program. help you do. Oh, no, what? no, you're not trying to help me. You're trying to bring me down and say, yes, no. we are. This no, is no. you, you're filth and you're dirt. And I'm not no, having no, that. No, no, no. I'm not having that. Sorry. Kathleen, I thought we'd moved on a bit this morning, you know. You recognise... I would have moved on only for you are trying to insinuate that we no. are living in filth and dirt and we're fly tipping, which is lies. No. And I... When I... She is... This is... This is... I feel like she's letting emotion cloud her better judgment right now. It's coming up here, I told you I wasn't We're going down, Skipper. It's all right, don't worry, relax. Relax, you're fine. You're fine. Nothing was learned up here. There was no eye open. She's not even taking accountability that, 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 that they're full, that's their trash, that they're doing that. We have respect. Not like people is making out keep showing. Look, there's dirt, there's dirt. Yeah, so what? It wasn't filth and dirt that we were gathering up and we were throwing outside Glenn's house or anybody's house. I'm not going to let people think. Wait, so her reason is it's not filth and dirt that we put in front of nobody's house. Wait, what are you talking? What is she? That we're filth and dirt when we're not. I'm sorry, but I'm not having it. No, 100%. 
I don't believe that the travelers or anybody anybody that in this program for that matter is filth and dirt. It's actually it's the opposite, but it's the disposal of the filth and dirt, the filth and dirt that is the in question. It's the disposal tactics. Now, in the beginning, you said we got water, we got flushing toilets, we got electricity. I did not hear you say we have regular trash pickup. That's not something I heard. And I waited. I waited. I waited 32 minutes to see. And 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 until this moment, we still not we're still not talking about garbage men. When do the garbage men come? They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen's so. clearly unhappy. Bob had hoped that the helicopter ride would have made her see things from the resident's perspective. Big mistake. Whilst the Colonel has done a good job building bridges between Lennon and the travellers, he's completely unaware that Kathleen is in an almighty rage. Oh my gosh. There we go. Right then. Oh, so you had a cup of tea, did ya? We did. We met you. <laughs> Ah, what, hey, what kind of energy was that, Kyle? So you had a cup of tea, did you? That's tough. That's the hardest line I heard in a minute. That's fine. Um, That's fine. You're going to come sit here? No, so replay you're... it. That's tough. There we go. Right, then. Oh, so you had a cup of tea, did you? We did. We met you. <laughs> That's fine. You're going to come sit here? So you're all right now, Mr. Grigley. Yes, How's yes, things I'll looking for you? Yeah. I'd say as well. You still think we're filter dirt, <laughs> yeah. scum. Oh, you haven't seen my place. You would call me worse than that. <laughs> yeah, but what, I see you. Well, what I'm trying to say to you, yeah. now that you're yeah. actually in a gypsy's place, do you still think that we're filth and scum? I've never thought they feel any gypsy feel for scum. I know the gypsy way and of why life. why did you say we were? I've never said that to you. Your face? Yes. I have it where you said that we couldn't take. Why did you say we were? I've never said that to your face. Yes. Feel for scum. I know the gypsy way and of why life. Why did you say we were? I've never said that to your face. Yes. I have it where you said that we couldn't think of anything else but scum. We were scum. And have, I, have I have done you that? Said that? Bro did say that. He did say that. <laughs> I heard you. I said on pub, camera. You said it in the pub with all your friends. No, and no, I your have you. Said, now, oh, you wait a minute. Shush, Lorraine. Plus the fact that you're training your dog to hate us, as well as yourself. Now, do you still think that we're filth and scum? No, I don't. Me? No. Thank you very much. I sat on camera. If I had said it, I apologise to you. Well, you did say it, because you know, I have uh, it on tape. Um, Kathleen, yes. he might have... She's super confrontational. She is very confrontational. You know who she reminds me of right now? Hold on. Said... Let me, let me hold on. Am I wrong? He didn't really mean, even at the yeah. time. And yeah. lots of us do that, including me and probably you yeah. and Len. The Colonel's hushed tones have calmed the situation, so much so that Kathleen decides to give Len the guided tour. Yeah. Right, I want to show you. Now, we put our rubbish in here in black bags, yep. right? We don't open that black bag and take a nappy and run down to Oak Lane and chuck it in anybody's garden. Mm -hmm. Do you honestly believe that we, that's trying so hard, spending a lot of money trying to get stay in here, that we're going to get rubbish, go to Oak Road and tip it where you can see it, take pictures of it and send it back to the council? Yes. Not you. Not the 30 people who are there legally. The 30 who are not. Bro over here in the cut is plotting to do it the moment he le when everybody leaves. <laughs> now come in, I want you to see my caravan. It's not much, I'm not posh like these now, well, but I survive in here. As you can see, might be the best in the world, but it's tidy. Yeah. It's as tidy, tidy as I can keep it. It's tidy than my house. Now, <laughs> have you seen enough for today? I've because seen enough today. I, I want to go as far as bingo. After a brief wobble, the peace process appears to be back on track. 
This has been a fantastic day. What we've done is brought both sides together, the representatives of both sides. They've had a go at one another, which is great. They've got their grievances off their chest. They've said it openly and clearly. And at the same time... There's no... But there's, there's, there's honestly no coming to a conclusion with the, the lady. She sees no wrong. She's, she's blind to the fact that anybody could do any type of wrong in her campsite. So she's not even thinking about the possibility of somebody doing that. Let's go. Salute, Crypto. Appreciate it again. Each side has had the chance to say, that's wrong, that's, that's a mistake. And actually, we've also got some agreement that mistakes have been made and things can be put right. I, I think that's a fantastic I've never heard her say that. For this day, as the negotiator. I think the negotiator is delusional as well. The visit has clearly been a success, and the two parties are starting to look, well, like neighbors. You sit here, my dear. And I'm not pulling my chair, any chair out for you. You sit over there. Oh, hardly. I'm supposed to be a gentleman. Yeah, I know, but I've, I've done the lady. <laughs> But what now what can happen is bro could just be like, all right, this is going nowhere and let me just play nice so they will stop because maybe they'll just stop now. All right, everything's cool. Maybe she'll go holler at everybody like, yo, cut it out because now we playing cool. Let's go. How many is there? One, two, I can't, it doesn't tell me. That's tough. Appreciate it, though. Okay. Top tier. Yep. The Colonel is keen to have one final meeting before the day ends. He wants to capitalize on the momentum that is built, and make sure both parties continue with this new vein of optimism. Bring people together and let them just relax and enjoy each other. Well, I'm Suddenly, chilled uh, out it, now you're this. chilled out. Mm, you're chilled lovely. out now. I needed this. You needed that? What about yep. you? Yeah, I think the same as well. Actually, do you think you might be friends? <laughs> Oh, I'm, uh, yeah, you, I think you know, I'm very I'm, good friends. I'm, I'm just worried about her lady friends. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> you could do worse, Len. I think that Mr. Gridley is not as bad as he's painted to be. He pretends to be tougher and angrier than what he is. He's not. Tomorrow, I... Are they flirting? I want to actually bring us together again and finally finish the process and try and get a sort of a road map to peace, if you like, a road map to understanding. All right, let's. Not, she just said all that, but it um, applied that he was some type of predator and things of that nature. Uh, I've let's got some thoughts that. which I don't want to say right now, but I want to develop overnight. Now you finna catch bro spending the night at her house later on. You're a wee bit late. You said twelve o'clock. That's what I was told. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, maybe um, it's a misunderstanding. You see, it's a beautiful house, isn't it? Once Lynn's arrived, the Colonel takes both parties to what he calls the front line. There, he'll attempt to put into place some measures that he believes will enable both the residents and the travellers to coexist amicably. The first point is the media. There's got to be a ceasefire. Mm. The media have been stoking this bloody problem up because it makes a great story, and actually, it's making it Worse than it yeah, is. Yeah, the media definitely gonna make it worse. Yes. Okay. The second point is keeping the house in order. Kathleen, the cleaning up of the lane, everyone is going to try and get together and actually clean up the lanes yeah. on all sides. The sewage, frankly, it's a shit pit there and it's got to be sorted. Now you're talking, it could be fixed. My third point is the cordon sanitaire. French word. Nobody's French here. What I mean is a, a neutral zone, a no man's land. And I'm suggesting that mentally, Len, you think of this area as not particularly a part of your garden. I would like you to put a fence across there and that would allow you to stop being so fixated about it. And the fourth point. Absolutely not. No. What are you talking about? This is my property line. If it's within my property line, I'm not putting another fence. 
to make somebody else feel good. To, no, 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 no. Is that what I just heard? Go back. That's not particularly a part of your garden. I would, you think, own a no man's land, and I'm suggesting that mentally, Len, you think of this area as not particularly a part of your garden. I would like... Do you know how dumb you sound? It's a part of my garden because I paid for it. No. Cute to put a fence across there, and that would allow you to stop being so That's fixated about peak, it. Bro. And the fourth point... No. ...is a hotline. Hotline's when good. there is a complaint or a, a whinge or something from the settled community, he can ring you. And if you have a problem, you can ring Len. Communication between you two, call it a hotline, is very important. Just as he did when he was in the field, the Colonel sets out his roadmap to peace. Neither Len nor Kathleen have raised any issues with the four-point plan. So, before the Colonel departs, he gets them to sign an aid memoir, confirming that they agree to these new living conditions. Handshake. <laughs> Adding a fence. Congratulations. Well done. Thank Thanks you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I thought these few days was pretty amazing. I have visited Len, and Len has visited me, and I think that something good might just come out of this. He's a pretty amazing guy. <laughs> um, if they stop, I'll stop. If they carry on, what do I do? Carry on. They've agreed to do what I suggested, but I have been witness to many ceasefire agreements. What I like to see happen is when people have gone back to their positions and put them into practice. And I want to see that happen. This whole show is cap. In a few weeks' time. I'll be back then. Cheerio. Pip, pip. We still got time. Hold on. With the colonel gone, the two parties are left to interpret his roadmap to peace for themselves. Len cleans up and prepares to build his cordon sanitaire. Whilst Kathleen tries to bring her own version of the highway code to the traveller site. I'm going putting up the signs. No tooting the horns, no speeding and no rubbish. The next day, Len re-enters the traveller site to talk about solving the sewage problem. What happened was, when the film crew were there the other day, yeah. they said, what's the smell? And I said, this is the smell, is the sewage problem down here. And even places a call into Kathleen to discuss the media blackout. Hello, Kath. It's Len up the... He didn't give her a short name. Kath. <laughs> ah, talk to him. Windy Ridge. Uh. All right, not too bad. You had all the press on the phone to you today? <laughs> on the surface, both parties have taken the Colonel's measures on board. But by the end of the first month, will they still be following the road back to peace? Let us know. I'm hopeful that... that the tension's gone down a bit, and there's a line of communication at the very least. And that's wait, is that the is that really that might be due from Binadorm? If it's not, they are strikingly similar. That's crazy. Some of the measures we proposed in our four point plan have actually been carried out. Fine, nice to Fine. See you. Nice Len, of course, you remember. Len, pleased to meet you. Come on in. Let's go in. Find the dogs. Now, take the, dogs. the Colonel's aim is to actually find out what's been happening in his absence. <laughs> so we're in the position that there's been some cleaning up, there's, the tooting's gone down, there's much more courtesy on the road. Len says yeah. people are being friendly and that sort of thing. From both um, sides, they're starting to come friendly as well Well, that's now. great. That's so one thing. You, you haven't fulfilled one Donald. thing. Donald. What is that? The sewage. That is a raw, open sewer. And it's got to be sorted. I want it to happen, Kathleen. Yeah. It's uh, got to happen, because yes. that's part of the deal. The one point that has gone slightly wrong, yes. and I'm amazed that we've only got one point, is this matter of sewage. But I'm so thrilled the to biggest hear point, though. that the relationship between the two communities has got much better. Thank you very much for taking part, and I hope the results of all your work end with everyone in this community beginning to trust and enjoy having people around them who are not quite like themselves. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for your time as well. And it was a pleasure and an honour for you to come down to the Gypsies. No, Lovely. It's my Thank honor. you very much. Fantastic. That this might be the cappiest show I've ever seen. Both sides capping the the host capping on his success. 
Like, come on, man. I know this little this little thing, whatever they had going on, didn't last. It was really a result I couldn't have dreamed about when I started this project. We've got the local communities talking to one another, the local communities trusting one another. I'm really quite pleased. Mission is accomplished. The resolution was welcomed in the local area, and the Colonel was once again back in the headlines. Now, three months later, both sides are still on good terms as they await a ruling from the appeal court. But Len is delighted. Noise and fly tipping are down by 75%. The Colonel leaves, smelling a distinct whiff of success. Still a very cap show. Very, very cappy. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.